Let's talk about data visualization and the way that design principles, specifically the Gestalt principles, can help us with the design of our data visualization. So the idea behind a Gestalt principle is that our brains interpret things sometimes in ways that we're not necessarily even aware of. And because of that, any given image is more than just the sum of its parts. Images convey all kinds of meaning uh, through some really specific means that we can identify and that can help us to communicate things more effectively. So just to sort of demonstrate this, if I show you this group of gray dots inside this gray square and asked you how many groups are there, um, you might think about that a few different ways. You might see that they're all inside that gray box and say there's one group of dots, or maybe you'll see the rows more clearly and you'll say there are five uh, groups of dots, or maybe you'll see the columns. There are a lot of different ways that you might interpret this, but it's cognitively difficult because there's not a lot of design guidance in how to think about how many groups there are here. But if I color some of these dots red and ask you how many groups there are, chances are you're gonna see two groups of dots. You're gonna see red dots and gray dots um, because the color is conveying information. In this case, it's providing a sense of similarity and that's the Gestalt principle here is the principle of similarity and our minds tend to group things that are similar together. Now, if I asked you again how many groups there are, you would still see the red dots and the gray dots as similar to one another and as two distinct groups, but you might also notice this subgroup over here that's separated um, away from the rest of the dots, and that's the principle of proximity. Things that are physically closer together in space are gonna be interpreted as more likely to be related. So if I asked you how many groups there are here, you might say, well, this is one group and this is one group, even though you would also recognize that somehow the red dots and the gray dots are separately grouped. Now, what about if I use the principle of enclosure and I draw black lines around two different groups? If I ask you how many groups of dots there are now, you're still gonna see that the red dots and the gray dots are two different groups. Um, but you're also gonna see that this group, despite the proximity distance here, that this group all belongs together. And you're also gonna see that this group belongs together into two distinct groups. And you'll probably also notice that within this group, there are subgroups that are somehow distinguished from one another. So we're now applying layers upon layers of Gestalt principles. We have similarity, we have proximity, we have enclosure that are helping this image to communicate a lot more um, than the original image of gray dots. We can use these same principles uh, when we're talking about data visualization. So I'm gonna go through a bunch of different data visualizations, but we're not gonna talk about the content of what's in the data. We're just gonna talk about what the images convey without us even knowing um, what the data actually is or what it's about. So the first question I have is, which of these two graphics is easier to read? And chances are you're gonna say that this side is easier to read. This side requires a lot of extra thinking and reading to understand which bars belong together and which ones belong separate um, because we haven't used the principle of proximity well. We're using similarity really well in both cases. We know that the lighter blue bars um, have something in common and the darker blue bars have something in common. Um, but by using proximity to group those more closely, this becomes an easier graphic to read. It communicates the information we want it to communicate much faster. So um, here we're also using color. And if I ask you which of these graphics is easier to read, my guess is you're gonna say that this graphic is easier to read. This graphic um, has this really heavy blue background and that's creating a focal point. And I think the intent is to create a focal point for the whole graphic, but images by themselves uh, command attention. And so we don't really need to add extra emphasis to say, hey brain, this is an image. Our brains already know that. And what happens here is that our focal point is on the negative space here or the space behind the data, which means that basically the focus of this graphic is on nothing. And our brains have to take a while to sort of disentangle from that bold nothingness to focus on the bars that we're actually supposed to be gathering information from. So cognitively, this is a much easier graphic to read without that extra design element. That doesn't mean we can't use color, but we do need to use color carefully. So 
in these graphics, um, there's a lot of color going on. And the next question is, again, which one's easier to read? And assuming that all of these categories are independent categories and that it doesn't matter the order that they're in, this graphic is much easier to read because of the continuity that's created. If I want to know which of these is the tallest bar or the shortest bar, um, I don't have to do a lot of extra thinking or measuring to figure that out because the image is laid out in a way that communicates that to me already. Um, that's not true of this image. And in fact, this image has so much going on with the different heights of the bars and the different colors that the, the colors almost communicate nothing because I would have to read what's going on on the bottom anyway. Here, I already know what's going on because of the, um, because of the continuity of the graphic. But notice, if I ask you which of these two graphics is easier to read, we're probably gonna still stick with the one that has fewer colors. We already know that each of these bars is representing something different. We, use, we have proximity to tell us that these are different uh, data points, and we also have the labels along the bottom to tell us that these are different. So I don't actually need the colors to tell me that each of these is a distinct observation. So um, now I can focus only on the heights of those bars, and that's really helpful, and it's much easier to read. So in some cases, simpler is better. That said, sometimes what we really wanna do is direct the eye to focus on something. So here again, we have that nice, rich blue color, um, but in this case, we're drawing attention to a specific bar. So maybe this is the category that we're really trying to communicate about, and we wanna explain where it is in relation um, to all of these other bars. Adding that focal point back in now is much more communicative than this previous image where we have all kinds of colors and I have no idea what's going on. This principle of similarity versus dissimilarity is telling me that this right here is the focal point and really communicates to me that this is what, uh, what this data visualization is about. Um, so color is amazing and powerful. And here's an example where um, we have sort of this target line drawn here, which is a, a helpful piece of information and helps cue us into why some of the bars are green, again, using that principle of similarity, and some of the bars are red. But here's a caution with color. If you're reading this from a Western context, chances are you're viewing red as bad because it's associated with like danger and stop. And green is good, right? It's beautiful. It's environmental. It's um, green means go, right? Um, but if you were reading this from um, certain cultural contexts, especially in the East, you would see red as a really positive color or really lucky color. And you might initially, immediately interpret this graphic in exactly the opposite way. So it's important, especially when you're using color, to be aware of the cultural context that you're in. So for example, in um, Utah, if you're using red versus blue, uh, there are some political connotations associated with that. There might be school connotations associated with that. So color carries a lot of context that we need to be really careful about and aware of as we're doing our data visualizations. Color is really useful though. Um, and can be used to emphasize things. So if you notice here in this graphic, you can see that um, similar colors of blue have been chosen to describe these two different data lines and they have a common fate. Uh, that's another Gestalt principle. So um, it's clear that, that these are somewhat related even though they're representing different data. And then in this graphic, you can see some really contrasting information. So not only is this data line very different from the patterns of the other two, um, but that's been emphasized by the fact that it is a different color. So um, color can be really powerful for sort of bringing home some of those messages. But again, we want to be careful about the cultural contexts and information that we have there. Um, this is another example of color being used um, powerfully. We also have continuity here on both sides of this graphic. We have enclosure separating out what's going on on this set of bars from this set of bars, and they're nicely uh, and clearly labeled. So this is um, a designed graphic that is really communicating a lot of information before you ever even read the title or understand what those axes are. So this is using a lot of those principles really powerfully.
Um, I do want to just um, make one caution on some of this on our way uh, into thinking about the ways that we are purposeful in communicating our data. We also want to make sure that we're not manipulating the way that people are understanding the data. So there's a difference between drawing attention uh, and focus to the communication that you're trying to share with people and actually intentionally shaping the data or the visualization in a way that is going to be um, manipulative. So we wanna be really careful. And one of those uh, things that we wanna watch out for is the difference between a bar chart and a line graph. So um, this line graph is simple and lovely and elegant and beautiful and really is just sort of tracking the top points on each of these bars. So really it's conveying the same kind of information, but when we use lines, and when we connect dots like this, our brains believe that there's actual data all throughout those lines. And as we can see from the graphic here um, in the bar chart, we actually don't have continuous data for all of this. We have discrete data that's happening at very specific points in time. So that doesn't mean that there's actually any sort of clear trend happening in the, inter, uh, in the interim here. In fact, a line suggests that there's there's data here or trend here that may not be the case. This may be a full-on lie. Um, and in fact, if you had measured at some of these intermediate points, you might get completely different results. So you wanna be careful um, to only use lines to demonstrate continuous data or data that's really connected and not things that really should be uh, indicated discreetly. If you wanna indicate things discreetly without these big heavy bars, you can use points or dots, just don't connect them. Um, so that's one of the other things that we wanna be careful about. Uh, again, the main point of this video is that design matters when we're communicating uh, our data visually. And we've talked about several different um, types of Gestalt principles, but only a few of those principles. We've talked about similarity and proximity and enclosure and continuity, focal points and common fate. Um, if you wanna look up Gestalt principles, it's kind of a rabbit hole because it's so much fun to learn about. Um, but remember to think about the ways that people might be interpreting things visually, uh, not just by reading the data that you actually have on the page.